I'm Anna Marie Oak and I'm from Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, Canada. And I'm here today at the FM Brush Company in Glendale, New York. It's a beautiful sunny day out there this morning. Not like Newfoundland weather, but it's so beautiful here. I'm going to be uh, demoing on my large surface canvas. It's a 16 by 20. And I'm going to be uh, demoing the faux sable. The faux sable brush. They come in three quarter. Uh, they also come in one inch. And I'm using a 12 uh, or half inch flat. Uh, those brushes, they have the beautiful pink uh, handles. Uh, they're synthetic, a blend of synthetic hairs, which makes them so durable and so lasting. Uh, it was very exciting to uh, have uh, Greg explain the hairs to me on the brushes. To understand how they're made, it's been pretty cool. It's a check in the box for me. Uh, today to be exploring this beautiful uh, factory. Anyway, we're going to begin. I'm going to uh, begin with my three-quarter faux sable. It's an angle shader and I'm going to be using uh, the DecoArt uh, Premiums. They're thick. It's the uh, CAD Red. You can use the uh, DecoArt American Paints, any kind of paint you have. And I'm going to show you how to build a rooster uh, by just using a, a few brushes and our beautiful faux sable brushes. We're wet our, always wet your brush uh, when you move into the acrylic paint. And to properly load your brush, you need to push down on the bristles, letting the paint go on the inside of your bristles, not only just the very edge. So I, I'm just painting on a black surface and that's fine. I'm okay to do that. You would trace out a, a rooster if this were a pattern packet. But we're gonna have fun here today and build a rooster and show you how really neat those brushes work. Uh, the CAD U gives a nice soft uh, red color and the black is showing through. And see how smooth that faux sable angle brush? Wow, it just moves, making that comb on that rooster so, so softly. It blends out very nicely and uh, works well. So this is our comb. Uh, I'm going to move down into the head part so I can form the black eye that we have about right here, okay? The eye on the rooster is gonna be about right there and it's gonna stay black. I'm going ahead with my uh, three quarter inch faux sable again, just to form the head a little bit because we're going to move into our oval shaped rake or a brush with a tooth and it's a blend of synthetic hairs again which is awesome for durability. And uh, it's chipped out. If you can see that there, they chip out the, uh, with their manufacturing, they take out the hairs and make them very uh, uh, beautiful for doing feathers and rooster hairs. I love the brushes uh, that FM uh, Brush has uh, designed for me and um, for the artists. The bellies, or the reservoir are so neat. You can touch that belly, which is close to the ferrule. It holds so much paint. So I'm going to show you how to properly load the faux sable to use for feathers uh, for a rooster. We wet our brush. I'm just gonna remove this one from the water here now and just lay it down flat, leaving a little bit of water in it so it's good. Alrighty, I am watering down my brush. I'm going into my paint, and as you can see, I'm really fully, completely loading it. There you go. Pushing down. Those brushes are so durable that uh, they can stand a lot of pressure. And great for students and for uh, professional artists as well. There's such, there's such a professional brush but really great for students. I'm going to move to a certain spot by my paint in a clean area. I'm gonna hold my brush up perpendicular to my palette, okay? 
and we're going to twist that brush you twist again anyone can sing you'll have to sing while you do this alrighty twist to a th full 360 now I'm going to pop that up I'm not going to drag the paint along I'm gonna pop it up those bristles are awesome fully loaded and just watch what I'm gonna do there we go we're going to move forward with the red so that our rooster can have some nice hairs and this is amazing you may not be able to see it as well right now because we'll add the white uh, to it also and that's when it's going to pop right out at you okay you little bird you got to have a little little beak there you go now we, when we we always go back to do the same technique over again load our brush go to a clean area twist can you see those hairs they're coming right straight out and they're separating they're separating which gives our our brush that look of um you know like very hairy those hairs are holding a lot of paint you can see how how much we can uh, work with this without even loading it up okay that's enough red for now you can add any color uh, I add yellows, I love turquoise, uh, oranges, but we'll be adding some gold leafing on this to punch it up at you before we add the, the white to it, okay? So, of course, we, we come right on down with this. One more stroke with the red, and I am good. There you go, hold it up. Make sure that you push that brush right to the silver part which is the ferrule and pop it up that really is the way that this brush is uh, correctly loaded to make hairs and feathers and all that good stuff okay now our little black eye a lot of people like that eye there okay that's what really gives them character okay we're going to let that dry a little uh, I'm going to move forward with my white to show you now the white feathers and I'm just going to use my uh, sand gray which is a light color there we go and we're using the same brush it's the oval rake brush by FM brush it's the faux sable and they have a pink wooden handle and they're beautiful beautiful brushes and they work really great for fur on uh, animals, uh, uh, birds, Santa beards, uh, you name it, they work really well. So we wet our brush, we fully load again. Move my water, there you go. And I go to a separate spot on the palette and I twist my brush, twisting it around 360, pop it up. And now I'm going to add, there you go, see how that works miraculously. Wow. And I'm just basically doing uh, S strokes. See that? S strokes. Now, you can see I load at one load and I still got a lot of, uh, lot of paint left uh, in that, that brush. A lot of uh, brushes cannot do that. They just can't. Uh, hold the uh, paint and there you go making this funny how the white really pops up brings it out there you go in those s strokes okay i'm waiting for this portion here to dry a little because i want to add some gold leafing uh, to it to show you how i uh, add my gold leafing okay now wet our brush and we just lay it there for a moment I use a lot of Pebio which is a liquid uh, oil fine art paint and um, I use them if I were to use this at home I would use little containers but I'm just going to pour a little bit here because I want to use it as a glaze over my acrylic paints that way I can adhere my uh, gold leafing on top of that I like the Eye of the Tiger, and I, uh, I love the Eye of the Tiger, actually. I have 
three in a combination set I use. It's a large uh, three quarter and I use a 10, number 10, and a liner in the set. And they're the ones I use for my uh, uh, liquid oils. I load them up by f just pressing down. The reservoir for the eye of the tiger is very thick, which is the belly of the brush here. The hairs are so thick and they uh, soak up your oil paint so you can uh, add more paint without reloading and they work so nicely with that. I've been cleaning my uh, Eye of the Tigers when I use them with oil with baby oil because baby oil has mineral spirits in them and then at the end of the day I take them and I uh, give them a good wash with the uh, odorless terps and they've been lasting forever. So I'm just going to apply this and of course this would be a little drier than what it is now but I'm okay with that I just want to show you what I do to apply the there you go and those temperatures here in New York uh, has been really nice for drying paint uh, I've been teaching and things and our paint has been drying so well Okay, I'm just going to lay that down. I would have cleaned that out with the baby oil, and but we'll do that after in a moment. Okay, so I think this part right here would be okay to add the gold leafing. Gold leafing comes in uh, packages that I use. It's a, it's a Pebeo product, 12 sheets. They're quite large sheets. Uh, I think they're like 8 by 8s And I cut them into fours. Uh, in fourths. That way you don't waste as much and um, you just cut them into fours and lay them down on your piece. I like to use my um, by FM brush. It's the acoustic for waxes. I love these brushes for my batiking. Um, with my hot waxes. I do a lot of batiking with uh, gin washi papers and these are awesome brushes for that. So durable when uh, you place them into your hot pots and uh, work with them. They're a lot of fun to use. So I also use them for my uh, gold leafing. I lay my gold leafing down on a spot that I want it to stick on. Shiny side up. That is very important. Most people, uh, when they lay down gold leafing, they say, oh, I want to put gold there, so I'm going to, you know, put my gold there. It doesn't come off. So that's why I place it shiny side up and over the pebio, which has now become tacky. That's what keeps it. There you go. You can see that it adheres. And as it's drying, it adheres really well. There you go. Uh, I also went up into the comb part to add the red. Oh, that's that came out really nice. The gold looks really nice as well. So we'll put some on the tear this into in half. Okay, it's not going to tear for me. That's okay. There you go. Just to show you the color gold. Can you see that? This is very nice. Using the acoustic, I'm using the half inch uh, acoustic brush by Dynasty. It's a wooden handle. It's awesome for applying this gold leafing. It's really giving it a nice subtle look and I'm really liking the way it uh, voila there it is. Very nice. There you go. Perfect. So once you get your rooster gold leafing portion done I will go back with my uh, oval rake brush and I'll add more white to kind of bring it together a little more for you. Go into your sand or your lighter color fully load and we're going to twist that out again. There you go. I'm holding it perpendicular to my palette and I'm popping it up. Therefore, I'm going to come in close to that eye of that rooster. Add a little dot 
there and there at one o'clock and maybe at six o'clock to give him some character. It's just like he's going to talk to you. You can see I'm going over the leafing. Okay, I'm just going to show you. It's not quite dry to what I would like for it to be, but I, I think I can show you how I added the hairs to his head. And the stray hairs is what makes it so unique. Wow, this brush. If you could see this, how much it, it's a beautiful brush for uh, getting the paint on it and working with you. Just look at those those furry little details. Ooh, I love it. I'm going to have to paint more, more roosters, different color roosters. My trademark is usually uh, bicycles and antique vintage dressmaker forms and things. But I think it's going to be roosters now for a little while. I'm stuck on this brush. Okay. And you can come down with the fur or the hairs. And his name is going to be Patches. Although he's kind of a little bit more delicate looking. Okay, now if you want to add a few finer hairs uh, for up here to come up into the comb area, don't add as much paint. That's all. You just go to your area and just twist that around and you don't have as much paint on it. And now you're going to add a few more stray hairs. This would be really cool on a uh, Santa face. Um, I use a smaller oval one. I think it's a one quarter inch uh, for the eyelashes on Snowman. Who would have thought Snowman had eyelashes, but mine do. Okay. I think this is pretty cool. Thank you for painting with me my rooster and using my faux sable uh, in my three quarter inch faux sable brush. It's the oval brush. Also, I base coat it using a faux sable. It's a one inch brush. Um, the beak and the comb, even if you wanted to, you could use the half inch faux sable. And of course, my angle shader. I use my angle shader faux sable for base coating all of my designs uh, in my acrylics, uh, and I'm loving them. My Eye of the Tiger, I use for my uh, Pebio with my liquid oil uh, paints, and I love those also. Uh, the script liner that I use, I like to use, is the black gold number one or zero. The number one has got a nice length on it, and I will demo a bit of the hairs sometimes in a, you want to put a few little loose hairs. I load my, br my brush, wet my brush first. I completely load my bristles going right into my paint and I pull out, pull outwards. There you go. And I kind of go do some curly cues. There you go. You make them a little more whimsical that way. The black gold brush in the script liner has the hairs, the synthetic hairs, the same as uh, the rake. Uh, comb in the faux sable and uh, they're awesome. The paint just um, really clings to it and able to, you're able to make very fine lines. Thank you for uh, sharing this with me and uh, I can answer any questions. You can email me uh, about this, uh, about the brushes or about any pieces I have at annamarie860 at gmail.com. Thank you. <laughs>